Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 15 says, Wherefore I also, after I heard your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the power according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We're talking about affectionate giving. And Paul said, I'm praying that you get revelation knowledge. Amen. And so that's that's my prayer that an understanding takes place. That people will get knowledge of the things of God so that we can function like God wants us to function. Amen. And so we're talking about we're talking about affectionate giving. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Today, today, I just really want to be simple with you so that everybody understand how to tithe. Amen. In Malachi, go there. Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter number three. We'll begin at verse number eight. Malachi chapter three. Beginning at verse number eight. It says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open uh, unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, but ye shall be a delightsome, delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Amen. Now, we're talking about tithing, praise the Lord. And, and, and I wanted to teach this lesson this morning, uh, even before we give, so that we can make sure that when you give, that you give correctly. Praise the Lord. Because I, once you get knowledge, you're held responsible. Amen. You're accountable to God when you find out the truths of God's word, whatever the subject matter may be. Uh, whether it's salvation, you're, you're accountable for it, amen. Whether it's living holy, you're accountable for it. Whether it's uh, talking about forgiveness and we share with you about forgiveness, then you're accountable for what you do. Now, when it comes down to tithing, uh, many people have a problem in church because they don't want to uh, uh, get separated from their money. Praise the Lord. But it ain't your money in the first place. Praise the Lord, amen. We have to understand that it's, it's for the kingdom of God. And whatever God has given you, he has entrusted you so that you can support the kingdom when it comes down to kingdom projects. Amen. So let's do this this morning. Uh, first of all, let me just define what tithing is. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tithing is 10 percent. OK, all y'all see that you're going to need the other camera. Praise the Lord. It, it looked better off the other one. Yeah, 10 percent, 10 percent of of all all. My increase. Amen. Ten percent of all. All right. Now, that means all your birthday money. Praise the Lord. I mean, all your income. Praise the Lord. Everything you receive, ten percent of all of it is the type. Praise the Lord. Now, now y'all, we're going to get excited because I'm, uh, you know, praise the Lord. I'm, I, 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 you know, praise the Lord. I'm teaching now. I'm in my zone now. I'm, I'm going to smile in just a second. Praise the Lord. All right. So, so, all right. Let's lift the spirit a little bit. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
So tithing is 10 percent of all my increase. So whatever I receive, God requires that I give a tithe. Now, tithing really is not about money. Amen. Tithing is about our obedience, whether we trust God or not. Amen. And many people, when it comes down to their financial status, don't trust God. Amen. Amen. And many of you sitting there right now, eight out of ten of you, the statistics say you don't trust God because you don't tithe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yep, yep. The person that's sitting next to you, down the road from you, could be a God robber because they truly don't trust God. And it's a heart issue. Amen. It really is a heart issue. That people just don't think that the word of God works for them. They would rather put their money in the stock market, put their money in a, you know, a down line, an up line, a cross line, whatever kind of line. And don't understand that God's system is not going to fail. But because he said that not one jot or one tittle of my word shall fail before this earth pass away. So I would rather invest in God's system than the world's system any day. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it's 10 percent, right? Y'all agree with that? All you increase now. So that we can just be so simple. Now, people get paid weekly. Bi-weekly. And some people get paid monthly. Huh? I, I'm sorry, by, by monthly. By monthly. By weekly. Praise the Lord. By weekly, that's twice a week, twice a month, right? All right, all right. What's semi-monthly? Okay, that's every two weeks though. Okay, 15th and the 30th. First and the 15th. Anybody in between? Praise the Lord. Anybody else get, what, 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 anybody else, am I missing a pay period? Amen. I want to make sure I don't miss no pay periods. Praise the Lord. Huh? Right, Bob Wheeler's every other Friday. Okay, yeah, some people get tips. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to get the tips too. Birthday money, I'm going to put all of it down here. Birthday money, graduation money. Oh, look at all my graduates. Re- Refund checks. And look, also, also, seed sown into your life. Okay? Seed sown into your life. Like, for instance, when, when people come in and, and, and share with pastors, sow a seed into pastor's life, when I add it all up, I got a tithe off of that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because I, I, I don't want you to miss out on God's best because many people are living under the curse. And it's not because God curses you. It's because you choose to disobey God. Okay? So now, did I cover all the pay periods? I got, I got, did I get everything? Anybody missing off of this? Off of this? Okay? So, so I, I, give, I, I give based upon when I receive. Amen? Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse number 1. It says, Now concerning the collections for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay up, uh, lay by him in store as God had prospered him. That there be no gathering when I come. Amen. <clears throat> now, most of the times people, people, um, let, me, let me put it like this. When I talk to pastors and I ask them when is given opportunities in their church. And they say just on Sundays. And I'm saying, well, you're missing out on Wednesday. Because people sometimes don't make it to church on Sunday. And they need to give on Wednesday. The Bible says on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, let each of us bring in store, you know, that which God had prospered us with. Right. 
So if I get paid on, what's today, the 8th? So if I got paid on the 6th, okay, uh, 6th, 13th, I'm going to use Fridays so y'all don't get on me. Praise the Lord. 20th and 27th of this month, then on the 8th, the 15th, the 27th, the, what's the first? Second, 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 29th. Then I ought to give. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I got paid here. This is the next opportunity I have to give. So then I ought to give. Praise the Lord. Quiet in the house. Quiet in the house. Okay, let me just make some numbers available to you. Let's just say that I made $569.34. How much is my tithe? Move the decimal point right here. So $56.93. And because, because I'm good, I'm going to give the 57 Amen. Anybody don't understand that? All right? It's quiet in the house. <laughs> now, 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 it, people say, Pastor, I can't tithe because I don't make enough money. Well, that's not true. Amen? Everybody can tithe. Everybody can do their part. So if I made $219, amen, gross, right. Let, let, me, let, let me make sure you understand. Okay. Gross, net, I made uh, $569, and what I say? 34 cents. I netted $376 and one cent, okay? And that's because they took out taxes. That's because I had a 401k. That's because I had insurance. <laughs> Somebody say child support. That child support. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Hey, look, look, let me say this. Brothers, you're right. You, look, look. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You take care of your... The Bible says you are worse than an infidel if you don't take care of your family. Yeah. Amen. And really, they shouldn't have to make you pay your child support. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then you got your vacation fund. Vacation. Then you have your car note. No, I'm talking about all of, all of this was taken out because it's weekly. This is a weekly takeout. Okay? And it brought me down to that. Now, your tithe is not $37.60. That's off the net. Amen? Your tithe is over here. Uh, God trusts you enough to give off of this. Uncle Sam don't trust you, so he take his first. Amen. Amen. Notice how Uncle Sam, when, 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 when you overpay them, how long it takes them to get your money back. Praise the Lord. Take you six to eight weeks once you file your taxes. But watch when you, when you owe them, they want their money right now, fast, quick, in a hurry. Amen. Brother Derek, it's kind of cold. Thank you. We all start getting covers out. I know it's cold. Everybody bringing a blanket. Okay. So, uh, so we give off of the gross. And not off the net. All right? All right. Now, y'all threw my, my what, what, what was I going earlier? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying the, the weekly people that say I, I don't have enough to give. 291 and 4 cents. How much is my tithe? 29, 10. I'm going 30. You know, we used to sing a song in the Baptist church. You can't be God given. No matter how hard you try. I'm going, I'm, I want, I'm going to the increase. Amen. All right. What happens then, Pastor, if I made $1,562.14? How much is tied? 
Okay, 156 and 21. I'm going 157. I'm round, everything is rounded up for me. Amen. What happens if, <laughs> praise the Lord, uh, 5,000. $322.79. And some of y'all asking, where you at? <laughs> where that man at? How much? $27,533. Amen. And that's just your tithe. Anybody don't understand that? Now, now I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Anybody have a question? Because I, I, I'm just going to be simple today. Yes, ma'am. If, I, if, I, if I've given off my gross and I get a tax refund, do I have to give off the tax refund? Technically, technically, no, because you've already given. But again, any increase I get, I'm giving. Amen. I, I understand that technically I don't have to give it because I've already given off the tithe. What, I, what I've overpaid the government, you know, that was an overpayment. Okay? But I'm saying as pastor, sharp, as Gwen and I, even if we overpaid the government and we got money back, I'm still going to give off of that. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Good question, though. Good question. Okay? Anybody else? Come on, don't, don't be scared now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to get to the offering. Okay? All right, let, let, me, let me deal with tithing. I'm going to get to the offering. Anybody else on tithing? Now, now, those of you you are watching my way of live stream, if you're watching my way of live stream and you have a question about tithing right now, send me an email. I'll get it right now. I'll answer your question. Praise the Lord. Amen. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to welcome you, but welcome. Amen. Now, send me a question about tithing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Make sure they ain't sent me nothing yet. All right, they ain't sent nothing yet. Praise the Lord. All right, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. The Bible says that the two of you shall become how many flesh? One flesh. Now, and that's a good question. I, I appreciate that. What I have seen happen in people's lives is that let's just say that one of you made $1,569.12 and the other one made $538.22. What I have seen happen is that mo many couples have just given off for either income, okay, and not combined them together to make one household income, and you're still a God robber. Amen. The two of you shall become one flesh. So when God sees your financial status, he doesn't see two incomes. He sees one income. Amen. And so so you combine them together and and give off of both incomes. Now, let's just say that it's a stagger. One week he get paid. One week she get paid. Well, then one week I'll tithe off of his. The next week I'll tithe off of hers. Amen. Uh, but I'm always going to I'm always going to be a, a tither. Because we're one. God sees us as, as one. Amen. So, okay. Anybody else? I'm tithing. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The question is, uh, you know, uh, you know, my month is longer than my money. Okay. Then I have unexpected uh, uh, expense that comes in. What do I do? I'm a tithe. Now, here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Because I'm dependent on God to be my source. Now, and, and, and look, when I was there. And here's, here's how I know it works. Gwen and I was there. We went to CCS, Consumer Credit Services. 
23 years ago. And uh, we, they told us, we don't know how y'all making it. Now, here's your month and here's your income. You got more money than your income. Now, I promised God that I was going to be a tither. Amen. And when I made that commitment to God, my mother died in April. The following week, uh, my, my boss came down and fired me. Now, I had made the commitment in January of 1991 because Keisha was born in 90, 1991. I made that commitment from this day forward. I would not rob you. Boom. April, my mother died. Boom. The next week, my boss came and fired me. And we went to CCS and they said, we don't know how you're making it. But I had made a commitment to God that God come hell or high water, come light bill, phone bill, car note, whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my tithe first. I'm going to look. I'm going to prove this thing. That's what I told God. I'm going to prove it. And then if it doesn't work, I'm going to tell everybody. But God, I know it works now. Praise the Lord. So I, so. So what 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 we did was we called on the seed that we sowed. OK, God, you said that you were rebuked the devour for my sake. Those people that's trying to eat up my income, take my stuff from me. God, you said you were rebuked them for me. Now, of course, now we had to call them. And we told them, hey, listen, all I can see is twenty dollars. Well, if you send them something, they, they can't they can't, you know, they got to take it and they, they got to show it as a payment. So so we we allow God to, to watch this now. God supernaturally gave us a plan of action, right? He said, call your, 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 uh, your creditors and work out a deal with them. So the first creditor I called, they, they told me that if I could pay a certain amount for three months, they'll forgive the rest of the debt. And then they put a little caveat on it. Well, the rest of it is going to go on your credit report. I said, okay, that's okay. My credit was jacked up at the time anyway. It didn't matter. I want this debt forgiven. Praise the Lord. So so we tighten up our belts. We said we couldn't spend any money. I mean, we cut everything. And I mean, we cut it. I mean, we cut it. And so we, we survived for those three months, p- making those three payments, and then they forgave the debt. And so when it worked that first time, I said, well, let me call another creditor to see if this thing worked. And God supernaturally showed me that it worked every time. And it got us out of debt. Now, they said it was going to be on our credit report for seven years. It didn't last for seven years. I received that. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you make sure you're going to give it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, I'm going to give them mine, too. Praise the Lord. Amen. I received that. Uh, it didn't last for seven years. It didn't last for seven years. We got out of debt and, uh, and got our credit so, much, so good that people wanted to give us money. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it all started with our commitment to tithe. Amen. Okay. Anybody else on on tithing? Any questions about tithing? I got two questions. First, right here. Daphne? Yeah. OK, so so this money is going to your children. You're not using it for you. OK, OK, because because it's different. I mean, if, if you set it aside for them. OK. Personally. OK, what I would do is teach my children how to tithe. It, look, you need to start them early. And because. You got to get them to tie into God's system. Amen. Now, what you receive, you give your tithe off of. But then you teach and train them how to give their tithe off of what they receive. OK. And you train them, you know. And what I what what Gwen and I did was we gave them money and say, OK, look, you need to put this in church. Now, Keisha don't have a problem with tithing because she understands. Hey, my daddy taught me how to tithe. You know, my daddy taught me how to give. That's how she gave that call away that time. And I was like, what are you going to do what? She said that I'm a, God told me to sow the car into somebody's life. Well, because we trained her how to give. Thank you. I received that. Because we trained her how to give. Now that she's old, she won't depart from it. She sees the benefit of tithing herself now versus me not teaching her and then, you know, letting her do whatever she want to do. 
You know, it's a requirement in our house that you tithe. Amen. Now, she gets to save all her other money, but I tell her, no, you got to tithe. Amen. Because this is, this, is, this is how you're going to get ahead. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. This is how you get ahead. Right. Praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. And I, I want all of you to get to the blessed state. And the blessed state starts by obeying God. Yeah. So you give off of what you receive and then teach your children how to give off of what they receive. And you watch. I'm telling you, if you teach them now. When they get old, boy, I'm telling you, they're going to be like, Mama, thank you for showing me how to do this thing. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good question. Uh... I'm not a member of any particular church. This is a question. Where do I tithe, basically? And if I, if I tithe, you know, how, how does it work? Okay. I just got a call the other day uh, about that same, same situation. My, wherever you're getting your spiritual nourishment from, that's where you ought to send your tithe. Okay. Now, God wants us to be involved in a local church. But if I move to, a, let's just say I move to a city, haven't found a church. I've been going to church after church after church trying to find a church, church home. Well, if, if I get paid on a weekly basis and I go to a different church every week, I'm going to tithe at each church until I find a church home. Because that's the ultimate goal to find a place where I could submit myself, yield myself to, because it's where all the saints are. So I'll tithe at every place, you know. Until I find that particular church home that God says, this is the place, make your residence here. Yeah. Okay. And so, so, and then, then, you know, like for those like people who watch by way of live stream, they have a church. Well, then they like our ministry and they can send an offering. Okay. So praise the Lord. So did that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. That's not true. Go ahead. Uh huh. I'll give it to you. Okay. Well, to be quite honest with you, we are beyond. Uh, we should be beyond the tithe, as New Testament saints. Amen. You know, because we should be doing more. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, so so the, the tithe is just the baseline. You know, we should be doing more. Now, the people that want to argue with you, because I know your story, all you got to do is just tell them your story. They'll, they, they'll be quiet real quick. Because if, if you tell them where you were before you start tithing and where you are after tithing and how much you sow, you'd be like, Keep quiet. We ain't, we, ain't, we ain't got to argue about this. Because I know this works. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Gwen and I, whoo, Jesus. I, I, Gwen and I, we almost have given $300,000 to this ministry alone. Yeah. And we ain't missed a beat. Praise the Lord. So nobody, look, I tell them, when you give $300,000, you come talk to me then. Because yeah. I know this works. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And see, see, the Bible talks about it. I think it's in First Corinthians chapter two and verse fourteen. It says, "The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him." 
Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Folk who are, who don't, who are not saved, they will not understand how you give $300,000 away. They don't understand that. Because all they think about is, what can I do with $300,000? Amen. That's all they can think about. But I, I, I'm thinking about the kingdom. How to honor God. Amen. Now, I, got, I, I have a question from the live stream, folks. Uh, it says, if you receive a gift certificate or someone paying something for you and you don't have the physical cash to pay the tithes, do you pay from what? If you receive a gift certificate. Okay, so if I receive a $50 gift certificate, guess what? You know, I'm going to find $5 oh, yeah. to give. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so that's increased. So if I get a gift certificate, somebody want to bless the pastor with a gift certificate to go eat? Okay, well, fine. Okay, uh, we'll give off of the gift certificate. Praise the Lord. You might not have the physical cash based upon the gift certificate, but, you know, you'll have cash somewhere. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your question, live stream. Praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I had a friend that, um, that um, he, he had a good job. He worked, you know, had a good job. And he was a deacon at his church. Mm -hmm. And because of his good job he had, he didn't tithe. He just gave more money, and he thought that he was tithing. So I, I, I shared with him, I say, you're not tithing because you give more than what you, your, your net, your, your gross. He might give more than his gross, but he just put it in the, uh, he just put it, you know, in, yeah. in, in the box and, and never put his name on it. On, you know how we do it. Yeah, he yeah. put our name on it. So that's, it, I told him he wasn't. Okay. Was I wrong? Okay. okay. No, no. Okay, for instance, when I was, when I was working at ExxonMobil, my base salary was almost $75,000. Okay? Now, if I gave 3000 to the church, I'm a big giver. Yeah. But I'm still a God robber. I'm still a God robber. And I might be considered a big giver. Well, you know, he's a big giver. And, 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 and the fallacy that, that some ministries make is they'll put this guy that gave 3000 over the finances. <laughs> and he's he a God robber. So if he'll rob God, guess what? He'll rob you too. Okay, any, any more questions about the tithe? Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Amen. And, and, and that's where that's where that's where when you when you uh, when you get proper information, it allows Holy Spirit to do a work in you. And now once once I teach you the principles of the word of God, it's on you. You can do whatever you want to do. Amen. Because there, there will be some people who sit here like I ain't doing that. Praise the Lord. I, I am not doing that. Look, you better be happy with what I'm giving. Look, it ain't affecting me. Because Gwen and I, praise the Lord, amen, God got us. We're doing it right. Yes, sir. Brother Phil. For the people that ask them, the New Testament scripture about tithing Yes, sir, I'll give them in a second. One, one is Matthew 23, 23. The other is in Hebrews. Matthew 23 and 23 says, Jesus was talking to, to these guys. Let's get there. It says, War unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These, uh, ye, these ought ye to have done, and not leave the others undone. So that's one. Um, and then the other is found in, is found in Hebrews, um, chapter seven. Hebrews chapter seven. And Hebrews chapter 7, 
Okay. Uh, verse number five, Hebrews chapter seven, verse number five, it says, uh, and verily they that are the sons of Levi who received the, uh, who received the office of the priesthood have, co- have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. That is of their brethren, though they come out of the laws of Abraham. But, he, uh, there's another scripture. Uh, it's, it's here. Let's see. Where is it? Okay. Okay. Verse eight. Verse eight. And here. Where's here? Where's here? Now, here, men that die receive tithes. So we all dying, right? Amen. We all going to die. So he said right here, men that die receive tithes. But there he, re- but there he receiveth them. Where's the there? In heaven. God receives them. Amen. Of whom it is witness, witness that he liveth. So those are those are three scriptures right there that says uh, that it's not just Old Testament. But let me I'll go a step further. Tithing was before the law. Amen. God included it in the law so he could bless us. Now, I got this revelation. I got this revelation, Brother Phil, a while back. From the very beginning. God had man tithing. From the very beginning, God had man tithing. Watch this now. No, I'm going to go back even further. When God told Adam, go tend the garden and everything you can eat of except for that. And I believe that the, that was the tithe. Don't eat the tithe. You can have everything. All the rest of this stuff, you can have. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But just don't mess with that. And guess what the first thing the devil said? Don't you want that? And that's how it is with us right now. I found that I live better off the, off the 90 than the 100. Praise the Lord. Okay, any more questions about tithing? Yes, ma'am. Tithing is important, but timing is as well. What do you mean by timing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. She, uh, she said tithing is important, but timing, timing is important. That you need to pay your tithe on time. Amen. Okay, I'll tell you why. Go to Leviticus 27. Leviticus 27. Praise the Lord. Leviticus 27. Look at verse number 30. Leviticus 27. Verse number 30. You ready? And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the whose? Is the Lord's. And it is holy unto the Lord. But read verse number 31. And if a man will at, at all redeem aught of his tithe, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. How much is a fifth? 20%. One fifth equals 20%. One fifth equals 20%. So now, now watch this. So, so really what he was saying was, if my tithe is $100, and I decide to take my tithe and go shopping, Amen. I take the tide. I go shopping. I go out to the beach. I go wherever I want to go. Blow the hundred dollars. Well, the Bible says that we owe a one fifth part, 20 percent penalty on that tide. How much is 20 percent? Twenty dollars. So that means that now. Now I owe one hundred and twenty dollars. Now, for, before you get in condemnation, <laughs> praise the Lord, because I know what the devil going to do. He's going to park on your shoulder and he's going to tell you, you know, you've been robbing God. Well, thank God for first John one and nine. If I confess my sins, God is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Boom. My slate is clean. Now, now, after today, praise the Lord. You are accountable. You can't use that now. Amen. Cause you have, you know, you, you know now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so said, Go ahead. Like 
No, when you get when when you, when you when you have an opportunity, we we give people an opportunity here at our church every Sunday and every Wednesday to give a tithe, to to give. All right. So when you come to church on those days, then I would tithe on those days. Okay. Praise the Lord. I mean, whatever. No, no. So, so you get paid once a month. Okay. So then when I, so if, if let's just say it's the 30th that you get paid. Okay. So whenever the next Sunday is or, or the next Wednesday, if I, if I come, if I come to church that Wednesday or that Sunday, that's when I'm gonna get my tithe and, and you're not under the penalty. It's just when you go blow that money. I mean, you, you blow what belongs to God, then God say you owe a 20% penalty. Okay. I and, and I didn't make it to church until the fifteenth. When I got paid on the fifth, I took my tidy and I put it in a in a in a, in a envelope, a tidy envelope. Okay. And I didn't bring it until that it either be the third or the fourth Sunday. But I always took my tithes out first. Right. So because you know you told me that I you know I, I said hey, ain't that no twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> yeah. Since Pauline come from my office, she be talking. Well, what, what, what was this? Well, okay. And she was like, okay, I'm going to take care of my business. I'm going to discipline myself to take care of my business. But let's just say that a person works shift work, and they're on the turnaround. And the turnaround lasts for 30 days. And so they, 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 they haven't come to church for 30 days. Okay? But they were disciplined enough to hold back God's tithe. Well, the next opportunity I have to get to church, then I, I sold my tithe. And praise the Lord for that Sunday. <laughs> All right. But you got to discipline yourself. Amen. You can't look at that money in the bank and say, oh, I can go spend this. No, you can't because it ain't yours. All right. Anybody else? Any questions? About yes, ma'am. Well, well, as long as you're giving them money like for for um, allowances. Well, I, I, that's what we started. We started teaching them at the allowance stage. Give from your allowance the 10% because it belongs to God. When they, when they work the summer job cutting grass, okay, whatever they receive, you give a tithe off of that. So it's a training process. And then when they get a job, it, they won't have a problem with giving because you trained them off the, off the allowance that I got to give. You trained them off of cutting the grass, I got to give. You trained them off the birthday money, I got to give. So now they have a mindset, I need to give because God has blessed me. So, so and then when they get older, they won't depart from it. Yes, ma'am. I know my children look at me. I cannot not Okay, go ahead. I really need to share and thank you. Okay. You know, there's always a lesson, there's always something to receive. Okay. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. And a few months back, my dad shared with me, it's no other way. But to show you the difference in having better understanding, and I can't wait to call you about it, because he did not mention, he did not define it to understand it. Right. Right. Okay. And the bottom line is, a year ago, the money I had was so multitude. Uh huh. But I made sure that I contacted him, sent him the money, let him put the money for my time. Okay. Then I came into a little bitty money, and I did what we might do. Praise the Lord. Now, I didn't give. you didn't give? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, well, 
here's the thing. Most pastors won't take the time like this to really show you, give up a, what they call a prime time moment. You know, because Sunday morning is a prime time because most of the people are there. Well, I'm, I'm a teacher. Amen. God has placed in me to teach the word of God. Amen. Amen. And if it means taking the time to do what we're doing today so that understanding can take place, then I've done my job. You know, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I got another question from the live stream again. They, they say they didn't quite understand the, the first live stream question. Look, listen to me. So so you got a gift card. OK, let's just say the gift card was fifty dollars. So that means that the tithe is five dollars. So if you don't have the five dollars right away, the moment you get the five dollars, give the five dollars as your tithe. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Anybody else on tithing? Because I want to answer her question on offering. Anybody else on tithing? I received that. Anybody else on tithing? Yes, 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 sir. Okay. What if me and my spouse don't agree? I received that. Thank you. Okay. Here's because I, I have I have this issue a lot when it comes down to especially the man usually is the one who don't want to give. Praise the Lord, you know, because because the man feels that you're giving my money to that preacher. I receive that you're giving that money to that preacher and, and I don't want you giving that money to that preacher. You know, it's enough that you got to go to church all the time. You know, you go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, and then they have special occasions and, and then you go to church again. Look, you every time they open the door to that church, every time you open the door to that church, you know, you there with that preacher. Now watch this. Mentioning that, mentioning that, uh, because no, because see, I, I have to explain to you so that people can you can have an understanding, and so that if you don't belong to our church, then you'll be aware of wolves. Somebody say a wolf. There are some predator, some predators that's in the pulpit. Amen, and they will, they will. They will attack you. Praise the Lord. I received that. Hey, ooh, 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 I received it. I received it. They will attack you if you're not, if, if you're not watchful and mindful, okay? Uh, now, what was the question again? Well, okay, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, my, what if, what if one of us don't want to give? Now, I tell ladies all the time, if your husband don't want, want you to give, look, don't, don't, don't get in no fight with him. I say what you do is you take what you can give, pay your tithe, and start praying on him. Amen. You tell God, God, I'm going to honor you with what I can. Because he, 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 you know, he's difficult right now. And what will happen is God will start molding that heart, changing that heart. And then all of a sudden he said, baby, baby, look, why don't you take my tithe to church today? I've had that happen. Talked to the woman, told her, hey, you just tithe off of what you can. And then, you know, God understands your heart. And then from there, all of a sudden, he starts sending his tithe. Praise the Lord. And then all of a sudden he came to church. All of a sudden he got saved. All of a sudden now he's a mighty man of God. Amen. But it started with her doing what she could, what she was. So if your mate doesn't want to want you to tithe, look. Look, the Bible says it's better to obey God than man. So you don't want me to tithe off of your portion of our salary. I'm going to tithe off of what I, what I have. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to keep the curse off our house. Amen. 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 So. Okay. Anybody else on tithing? Yes, ma'am. Yes. It's increased. I'm, I'm going to give off of it. Two dollars and fifty cents. That's twenty five cents. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, hey, look, I, I, look, I, I don't. It's, it, it's the. It doesn't matter what it is, or, or it's the principle of the matter. Is that whatever I receive as increase, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give my tithe off of it. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, he's not tithing. He's not tithing. He's giving to Salvation Army. 
Because the Bible says you bring it to the storehouse. The last time I checked, the Salvation Army was not God's house. I mean, they might be doing good things. Well, it sounds like he mad at some preaching. You know, praise the Lord. Uh, and so, and, and you know, I, Brother Grogan, I've heard, I've heard it, man. You know, I'm just going to give my money over here because I don't like what's going on, on over there. Okay? Once I give my tithe, God honored that tithe. Now, what other folk do with it? God's going to hold them accountable. Amen? So, that ain't none of my business. Okay? So, so brother, man, I gave you the tithe. Do what you got to do. But now, God's going to hold you responsible for how you handle the finances. Praise the Lord. Yes, any more questions about tithing? Make sure I don't have any more from here. Okay? Live stream audience, I hope that answered your question. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, now, so the tithe is 10%, right? So I have 90% left, right? Anything out of the 90 is an offering. Okay? Now, here's how I look at offering. The tithe only tells God that you can be trusted with money. Okay? God, you can trust me. The offering tells God, I want to be blessed. Okay? Luke 6, 38, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says, sow a little, get a little. Sow bountifully, reap bountifully. So, the principle is, out of this 90%, I'm telling God, okay, God, this is where I want to get blessed at. And so, so, so what we did was we started out a tithe in $5. Because that's all we had. God, first, I'm going to show you, you can trust me. 23, uh, 23 years ago, God, I want you to trust me. Now, God, I see the other side of that thing because he says, you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. So it's not enough to just give the tithe. I got to give my offering too. OK, so what we did was we gave our tithe and if we have five dollars extra, God, we're going to sow five dollars. God seen you can be trusted. Then God increased us and he said, I want you to give the tithe and twenty dollars. OK, find something that you can give toward on the offering envelope. Give the twenty dollars. Bam. OK, now this thing's starting to work because now I'm starting to see the increase come back. The multiplication factor come back. And so now I got 50 extra to give. So God says, okay, give the 50. Give your tithe and the 50. And then God starts speaking and says, okay, you gave the 50, now give again. Give again. So, so then, you know, I gave more. Because I wanted more back. I, look, I don't care what nobody say. They can say that, that I'm, I'm colonel. They can say that all he's about is the money. No, if you didn't want money, you wouldn't be going to work either. So, so don't criticize me because I'm teaching you the principles of God's word to show you how to get, get increased God's way. Amen. And the way God's system work is I plant a seed and expect a return. I have an expectation when I, when I give. Amen. Not just to be given to give. No, I give because there's a purpose behind it. I want something out the deal. And God doesn't mind me want more out the deal. Amen. And so, so, so we, we give off the 90. The Bible says this, as he purposed in his heart. See, it's the purpose of my heart. All right. And so God is always looking at my heart. And he says, as you purpose in your heart, that's how you give. So sparingly, reap sparingly. So bountifully, reap bountifully. And I purpose in my heart, God, I want the bountiful return. So guess what? I got to give bountiful money. It's just that simple. Okay? Anybody got a question about the offering? Yes.
That's an offering. Yeah, that's an offering. I mean, make sure you, it's good ground to sow into. That's all I say. Just make sure you got good ground to sow into. Amen. So you, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. So, 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 so watch this. Watch this. I feed a whole bunch of people. I, 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 I feed a whole, I take pastors out to lunch. I take people out to lunch. I feed a lot of people, a lot of people. So I always, huh? I heard you say that. You didn't take me out to eat. I heard that. I heard that. So, so, so now watch this. Watch this. I will never go without a meal because I've, I've sown food into people's lives. So my ex, whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. Amen. So I sow whatever I sow. I'm expecting that. So when I bless people with, with taking them out to dinner, shoot, I'll, I'll be looking for when Gwen and I in the restaurant, I'll be looking for somebody to say, oh, your tab has been paid. Praise the Lord. I'll be looking for it. It has happened. It has happened. We, we go to a restaurant, man, and the waiter come over and says, look, look, it's already taken care of. I say, okay, praise the Lord. Now, I'm a, now, now what I was going to give to pay for my meal, I'm going to bless you now. Man, we go, we go to Papa Do's. We go to Papa Do's a whole bunch. Man, praise the Lord. I'm going to turn into a crawfish after a while. Amen. And uh, 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 me and the pastors, me and the pastors that we go, I go eat with, we, we, we bless the waiter with a $400 tip. Lord Jesus, look, when, when we walk in, they run into our table. Look, we want to wait. We want to wait on y'all. We want to wait on you today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because they understand these, some, these, these boys, some givers here. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Right. Anybody else? On, anybody else on the offering? Anybody else on the offering? Amen. Anybody else on the offering? Anybody else on the tithe? Questions? Okay. Yes, sir. Then you're wrong. You're wrong with not expecting. Because, because everywhere you see given in the Bible, it always talks about receiving. Give and it shall be given unto you. So and you shall reap. Everywhere. And so that's the, see, that's the, that's, that's the fallacy with church. Because they don't ever teach us to want to receive. Well, whatever it is. No. The Bible says it. I'm not saying this. The Bible says it. I can back everything I set up with scripture. You ever find giving in the Bible, you can always find receiving. Huh? Everything. So, so the, the, the promise, the promise for tithing is, he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So, so guess what? So I'm expecting God to take care of the devil in my finances. When the devil starts messing with my finances, God, this is your, look, you said you're going to take care of this dude. And then, then it says, and all nations are going to call you blessed. Folks should be calling you, man, you blessed. That's right, I am blessed. And I don't sugarcoat it either. I, I, I live a blessed life, praise the Lord, because he said that I was going to live a blessed life. That's my expectation. Amen. And when I get my offering, I'm looking, I'm looking for a return. Man, I, look, I sold into men of God's life for the anointing they had on their lives. God, I want that anointing. Amen. I want that integrity. Praise the Lord. I sold for integrity, man. If a man can stay with his wife for 50 years and not mess up, guess what? I'm going to sow into that because I want to be 50 years and not mess up either. Praise the Lord. I'm sowing for a purpose. Amen. Say it again. Well, of course he does. But but guess what? If I expect it, I'm gonna be looking for it. Amen. God's gonna always reward his children. But to the degree that I expect for him to do it, because he's my daddy, and because he said it. Man, it just gets sweeter and sweeter, man. I know it's you, God. I know that was you. Because I sold that seed for that thing, and boom, I got it. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Anybody else? Which statement was that? The one where you said that there's no place in the word where there's giving and that there's not receiving. Yeah. Because that was something that Sister Gwen has ministered to me even years ago. And I was always the person that couldn't take a compliment. When somebody say, you look, I couldn't say thank you. I'd have to explain. You know? Right. So she had to teach me to stop explaining. If somebody say, you look nice, just thank say thank you. you. Just, right. Just receive just it. Receive it. Yeah. Just receive it. You know, don't. And so when you did that, I actually went to the word. Specifically to try to, to find, find, yeah, like yeah. Where did you find it? I didn't find you it. didn't find. You ain't gonna find it. Right. And see, and the reason I say that is because I was there. I was like, oh, no, no, baby, I, no, 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 I, I, don't, I don't need it. And be lying. <laughs> Trying to be humble. Oh, I don't need it. And then, then I would go back to God in prayer like, God bless me. He said, fool, I was trying to give it to you, but you never received it. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. So the person that was trying to give it to me missed out on a blessing because I'm being foolish that now nah, I don't want to receive nothing. I'm like, and then I go back to God, God, help my knees, bless me, God. And God say, hey, 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 newsflash, I sent somebody to give it to you. But you didn't want to receive it because you're all pious. You think you, you're, you're churchy. And I'm like, okay, God, now, now, what, 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 y'all hear me? I, I receive it. I receive it. Yes, I, I, I receive it. Praise the Lord. Because God had to give me a revelation that I'm missing half of the half of the equation. I got the giving down. But then when it came down to receiving what God had promised on the return, I kicked it away. Amen. So y'all need to have an expectation. Yes, ma'am. You only, how many times do you get it? You got it that once? So if I so so if I got it this semester, I'm gonna tie it off of this that, that check for this semester. Now I if and I still have some left, I don't keep on giving off that's giving off of, uh, the tithe off of it. I, now it becomes an offering. But now the next semester come around, I get another check, then I give a tithe off of it. Right. So so if you got five hundred dollars off the off the refund check. Well, y'all getting big bucks now these days. Twenty five hundred dollars. Well, I wish I would have got twenty five hundred dollars when I was in school. I would, praise the Lord. I would have blew it like they probably blew it. <laughs> but no, no, you give off of it. You know, when you receive it, once you get it in your hand, then you give the tithe off of that. Okay. Yes, sir. Do I tithe off the of loans? No, because I got to pay it back. That's not my money. So if I if I go borrow ten thousand dollars, I got to pay the ten thousand back. Now, no, yes, <laughs> it's a loan. It's not your money. Anybody else? Yes, sir. What's the difference between an offering and an alms? The Bible says an alms is what you, what you do in secret. Yeah, you know. So often we, we give publicly. Alms is I'm doing this. Nobody knows about me. And God said, I'll reward you openly. Okay. You know, because there's sometimes I give to people. I tell them, look, don't say nothing. That, that sometimes sometimes people people don't even know that Gwen and I gave them something. Because <laughs> I, I, I pull a brother Robinson on them. Bro, brother Robinson called me one time, say, Pastor, I don't want this person to know. But the spirit of God laid on my heart to give to this certain person. I, I need you to come. Take this money, go give it to that person. I say, yes, sir, I'll do it. And so that's, sometimes I have to give like that because I don't want people knowing that it's me and Sister Gwen that's giving it because now we create some, oh. yeah. Okay, anybody else? Last call. 
Anybody left on live stream before I go off the air? Let me make sure. Refresh. Okay. Pastor, you said you said about the loan that you didn't have to give off of. Well, uh, at a time when I was going through my stuff with doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, when you say give, I say everything I get. Everything I get. Yeah, watch your language. <laughs> Now, I'm, I want to pay it back. Now, I want it to be, right, right. But that's not that's that's just uh, offering the seed that you're sowing, okay. which is fine. I mean, you could sow out. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. Now, yeah. you could sow out of it if you want to. That's the choice you make. That's as you purpose in your heart. Okay. But as as a technical standpoint of giving the tithe off yeah. of a loan, no, that's you got to pay that money back. That ain't your money. Mm -hmm. Amen. It ain't your money. Right. So so when it becomes yours. And you have it, then you then 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 you give it, okay? Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Last last time, last time. Praise the Lord. Well, give God a big hand of praise. Amen. <laughs>